Welcome to episode two of Knock Em Out The Box. My name is Vinny Paz. I'm here with my co-host, with the co-most, Brandon Long. B, how you doing, my brother? I'm good, Vinny. I'm good. Um, uh, sad news this week. Uh, so, it's, it's a somber... Uh, I know it's our nature to be lighthearted, you know, on the yeah. show. Uh, we lost an all-time great in Marvin Hagler this weekend. So we uh, we wanted to start the show and um, pay homage to one of both of our favorite fighters. So um, certainly, my I don't know. Way of all time. Well, I, I wanted to get into that because I wanted to. I wanted to ask you: Do you think he's the greatest middleweight of all time? And before you answer, are we counting the fact that Sugar Ray went up when he was the? We would both agree he was the best at welter, right, Sugar Ray? Yeah. Would you agree with that? I I would. I would. Okay. Agree. So there's at least an argument to be made that Marvin Hagler was the greatest middleweight of all time. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and I, I actually, uh, I, I, I think he is personally. Um, I, and again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't not, uh, I wouldn't argue with anybody else if if he's either if he's either one, two, or three in my opinion. Agreed. Um, but uh, but I just want to talk a little bit about him. Um, it's a, it's an incredible, to me, it's his story is incredible. Uh, well, let's, he, let's, before you, before you explain some of this story, let's just, let's just get some of the accolades out of the way. So people that are younger, didn't get to see him because he retired when I was 10 and you were eight. So right. we, that was like, what, you know what I'm saying? Like I, we, I, that, I remember uh, him as a person more from the right guard ads, uh, sure. You know, then then his actual boxing until I got older and I started to like dig back. I knew he was, I mean, he was like a. He, I remember my uh, Sports Illustrated like laying around. You know what I mean? And sure. Him on there. Well, um, there's an irony in those right guard ads when you knew him as a fighter. He was such an unlikely guy to become this sort of face man. of a right guard. Yeah. yeah, and then became a movie star in Italy. Right. He moved to Italy, and became right. a movie star. But I, r- real briefly, I just. For those uh, who, who are too young, at least I know everyone knows who Marvin Hagler is, you know, hopefully if you listen to a boxing podcast, I'm sure you do. But um, so strictly accolades, member of the International Boxing Hall of Fame, I believe he went in in 93. He retired in 87. So he went right in as soon as he was able. Member of the World Boxing Hall of Fame, fighter of the decade. Um by Boxing Illustrated Magazine for the 80s. Twice he was named Fighter of the Year. As we said, one of the best middleweights of all time, you and I believe that he is, and was undisputed middleweight champ from 1980 to 1987. I cannot explain to the people out there listening how crazy that is. Well, I mean, if you, 12 defenses, okay, 11 before the, 11 stoppages, um, the only person he lost to in that span, that seven year span was Ray Leonard and another all time great. So, and, and a controversial loss. Um, I believe he won that fight. I, do. Um, I, 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 I had him winning. I watch it at least once a year and still score it when I watch it. Uh, I have, um, uh, this, um, another thing, obviously this, this is close to home for you and I, because that's our era. It's, you know, these things, when your heroes, you lose your heroes, yeah. it's a little bit different. It's, um, yeah. But it's it's not the last, it is not the last fight I watched with my father before he passed, but it was the w- definitely one of the last super fights because my father died within a year of that. So that fight is very important to me. And when they would run stories on Hagler and talk about how he never left the Petronelli's, only had one promoter, one trainer, one manager his entire career you're talking to a guy who who ran one weight class combat boost one weight class you're you're you know very few guys you're talking about who else think in your mind who else did that maybe a costume zoo and uh, yeah. just an all-time great my father i remember like watching the, it's actually choking me up like yo you can, I my father telling me like you can learn a lot from this man i guess it was like i guess I, at the time i was so young i thought he meant like as a like as a fighter but I didn't know what he was. I, that's, but I didn't know what he was trying to tell me. It was his loyalty, his, uh, uh, his not only his style in the ring, his style outside of the ring. The, right. the, the probably the most loyal, loyal fighter ever to everyone that he had around him. 
to the Petronellis. You're talking about racial tension in the country at that time. This is a black guy in Brockton from Newark, training with Paisans from from Massachusetts. Yeah. The story that you wanted to talk about is just so interesting. Besides his greatness in Newark, you know, but and and um, and really made his bones in Philly. Uh, yes, in, in your hometown. In yes, you from lost. Philly. Well, I mean, you're talking about. I know, I'm sure, I know we've spoken about this off air, but all three of his losses are, uh, could have been could, wins. Could have been wins, right. And, you know, the, the only, the only, the only loss he didn't avenge, uh, and avenge by knockout is Ray Leonard. So he lost to Bobby Boogaloo Watts. He lost to Willie the Worm Monroe, the uncle of Willie Mon Willie Monroe Jr. I don't understand. I don't know how Willie's a junior. I think it's the boxing uh, right. He's a junior. Right. Right. Um, Willie the do? Worm from Philadelphia. That fight was actually at the Spectrum. Uh, right. Before, you know. But but um, yeah. Avenged. Avenged and the, both. And of those by the losses. way, the. The draw was also with Vito Antuofermo was also controversial. Many Very. people thought that was a robbery. I mean, he 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 put it, he put he laid hands on Vito, and I like Vito as and a then, fighter and human being. And, and then and then stopped him the next time around. He also, right. You know, so this is a he, guy who could brawl. He he, he he beat every fighter he fought ever except Ray Leonard, except Ray Leonard. and he wanted that rematch right. and didn't get it and, and said retired. fuck you and fuck boxing. And, Yes, and it was, and then it started being offered to him over and over again. And he said, "I, I wanted it when I wanted it. I'm done. Right. Th 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 this was my life. I dedicated myself to it. I was there. I was ready for the fight right away. An immediate rematch. This guy's a diva. He's playing games. I'm out. Peace. I'm going to Italy. Right. Um, I don't. Uh, do we know what happened? I mean, the young no. guy." Still in great shape every time you would see him. Last time I saw him publicly, he was with Golovkin, who he loved and who yeah. he championed, and he looked great. He, he still beat all three of us up at the same time right. at 60, um, you know, in his mid-60s. I, so I don't, I don't know I don't what know. happened. Uh, his wife, Kay, uh, released a statement um, dispelling any of the, uh, the ugly rumors that were sent out that the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine killed him. Uh, she there was uh, something from uh, Tommy Hearns IG that was sort of ugly and not. Yeah, that's uh, not what we're talking about. It is. It is. But again, if we're going to talk about them, they're going to see that because when you do a Google search of uh, of of Hagler, the second thing that comes up besides his name is, uh, you know, Google finishes your search for you. Yes. COVID nineteen. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's how many people are googling it. You know. Uh, right. So, I mean, all I know is what came from his wife, Kay. Who is his wife? <laughs> and his his son James said, "My father was having trouble breathing, and he said his chest hurt, and we took him to the hospital." Sounds you know like a I mean? heart attack to me. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, um, I, 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 you know, it's uh, I think it's very irresponsible where some of these people are taking it. You know what I mean? And I'm um, it's sad, and that the fact that the family now has to defend those allegations when they just want to mourn. It's and if that's even coming up, B, when we should be celebrating this guy's career and life, right. that that's that's an addendum to it. Like, no, 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 no. You're talking about the greatest middleweight that ever lived. For, right. for, for the purposes of the show, one of the greatest middleweights that ever lived. It's top 15 of all, all time. He's in, my, he's in my personal top 50. You know, I have a, I, one time I did a top 20 or 25 just to do it. And I have it saved in my phone, ironically. So anytime anyone asks me, I don't have to rethink the list. And when this happened, and you said we have to talk about Marv Bash, we have to talk about him. Right. I was like, he's you're talking about a hundred and twenty plus year sport, and a guy and this is, tens this is, of thousands. Pri of ten yeah, prior prior to the show, I said to Bill, I said this is like Nolan Ryan dying. This is like Joe Namath passing away. This is this is what this man is to boxing. This is the yes. one to three guy at his weight, and and by the way, it's a glory division. So middleweight's been around forever. Yes. Um, so this is a this is a division that's not one of these subdivisions, mid divisions that they can't correct. Be. You're talking the, the pantheon of Jake LaMotta, right. Sugar Ray Robinson, Carlos Manzon, Bernard Hopkins uh, in right. the pantheon of the sport. Just. The Mount Rushmore are middleweights. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I mean, if, if you look at his Philly resume before he was a champion in 1980 alone, he fought Benny Briscoe. At, Hard as, as we, nails. Yeah, as we mentioned, Bobby Boogaloo. Watt. These were his come-up fights. 
Yes. Willie Monroe. And he got ripped off. You know, uh, so when you really what we could do is just get into the man who he was. His mother, after the Newark riots, moved him and his brother to Brockton, Massachusetts. I and think he was 13 when they yeah, got he was out a of shy there. kid, new kid, you know, in yeah. town. And uh, he he wandered into a boxing gym and uh, and and couldn't afford, you know, the fees and the Petronelli's were pretty cool like that, where if you couldn't, they train you anyway. But he said, well, I don't I don't really do anything for free. There's got to be a catch. They owned a construction company. So he went to work for them. A the guy worked construction. He was just he's just a tough Tough, tough guy. Tough as nails. Right. And he worked construction for these guys and and they trained him and molded him and shaped him. And he sh- and th- I, I think there was a, the shape was already there. They just had to point him in the right direction. Yeah. The talent was there. They just the had mentality to, was there. They had to curate Everything it. Was there. Yeah. And and again, uh, he could do anything. He could box. He could brawl. Uh, he could switch hit before that was a, a, a thing. A thing. And what I mean by switch hit, he was a southpaw. Uh, listed as a southpaw, but he could just as easily box you from an orthodox stance. Um, if he needed to jab you, jab you, he would jab you. If he need, it was time for you to go to, for him to end the night early, he'd end the night early. Um, you, I, I don't often say that there is a is a gap in talent when with when guys are top level. Usually, a hair of a difference. Sure, and it, it translates into something. You know, in any sport, by the way. You sure. know, uh, the greatest pitcher in baseball is probably only a little bit better than the last guy on the bench, you know, it's well, just that they say bit. they use that. There's that saying of, uh, in a lot of sports, a game of inches, right? You know, if, right. if this guy's reflexes were a smidge better, he wouldn't have got clipped with that shot. Right. That right. little extra that makes you special. Hagler, Hagler to me always seems so much better than, than the people he was, uh, he was fighting his opponents, except Ray Leonard, uh, even, oh. even, you know, even Hearns, even Duran. Duran gave him hell, but Duran gave everybody hell when he wanted to. Um, but and that was also later in his career. And again, we talk about his come up fights. His come up fights in the seventies were is like you know he had to fight everybody. Well, I, I want to add on to you saying that his come up fights in the seventies, while he's fighting everybody, he's still not getting that title shot. He had no. to scrape and claw and. And and f- and fight in places that were not his backyard against hobos, against <laughs> I'm using air quotes now mandatories to get a shot. Right. This well, let's talk that. about his shot though. He had to go to Wembley and deal with boxing hooligans to f- to beat Alan Minter. Okay, so he goes to Wembley, and after he knocks out, stops Alan Minter in one gets, of the most disgusting displays. They throw bottles. They throw all kinds of racist you know, uh, epitaphs at him, bottles, all kinds of shit. And they had to escort him out of the ring after he beat Minter. So, I mean, there's photos of uh, Marvin's camp trying to shield him yes. from what is being thrown and launched into the ring. Actually, this whole segment's getting me choked up. I Le- love legend, the guy legend so has much, it, Legend has it at that fight, yeah, Vito Antofamo was, was – uh, was calling the fight. He's, I think he was doing color for the fight. And the riot, when the riot happened, someone grabbed Vito from behind. Vito knocked somebody out. Like, the, like that's how crazy it was that yeah, was the box, and they had to beat people off, literally beat people off of them. The, the, only, the, the only thing I ever saw that buck wild was uh, Andrew Galata, Riddick yeah, Bowe. Yeah, Galata Bowe, right. And, and, uh, like, I, I have wouldn't... a daughter, and I have to get, get her out of here. And, 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 and basically, up. Foreman saved their lives that night because... Right. George, you do not want smoke with Big George, yeah. even when he's a hundred. I wouldn't be surprised if you were one of the rioters that night, knowing your <laughs> history. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> was a... um, it um, was 1997, so I'm putting a. I, that was right at the time where you might have been misbehaving the way. Maybe, that, maybe. maybe. So but I just we will to... we'll neither confirm nor deny that you were amidst <laughs> the riot at the garden. But uh, back to Marvin. I, I think he deserves an entire show uh, where we can we can really do him justice. And uh, I do too. And, and if and people want that, let us know. Career. Yeah, guys, hey, that's that's right, Vin. Guys, tell us. Let us know if that's something you guys want. And we comment will. under the video. And right. um, that's and what I, we're here for. And I just want, and I'm going to point this out later on in the show. And I wanted to point it out now, and I have it with me. If you if what he was a part of, Hagler, and I'm talking about him in a larger sense. 
was the last, a lot well, commonly referred to as the last golden era of boxing. So post Ali, there was a drought, and there was four guys that resurrected boxing. The four until kings. Mike Tyson. Yes. Right here. So yes. if you guys, if you guys are interested, this is the book. I recommended it uh, on Discord to uh, to one of our listeners. And I really recommend you guys getting out there. And, and of course, there's a forward by Pete, Ham the late, great Pete Hamill uh, in here. And uh, it's touching because Kimball died shortly after this. And now I'm getting choked up because this book means so much to me. Uh, I've read the book maybe four times. Um, and it, it's, it really puts a, an incredible uh, you know, tale of how these four guys really kept the sport alive. Uh, and to think... To think that they the were, to think that they were in and around the same weight class at the same time, performing at that level and four and, twelve times. Yeah, yes. And you saying something earlier about there being a disparity, and how there's rarely a big disparity because you're talking about top level guys. At least the people that we're going to be discussing on the show are right. top level top guys. guys, and. All of these guys, they're, they're, we will, through, the, through this show, that will hopefully last until one of us croaks, we're going to discuss great fighters. But I want to say for me, I don't know if B agrees, but for me, I, there's, um, there's a separation when I talk about great fighters and what B is talking about with Marvin Hagler, and that is a special fighter, right. which is above a great, because there are guys that we will tell you are great, and they are, and they are regarded as great. And then this, these guys come along, along sometimes that are generational talents, and they are special, and they're special people, and they are special in the ring, and they are special for the sport and special for us. And these people help shape Brandon and I. And I'm, I'm getting choked up because that's how Marv was for me. And it's terrible that at 66 and yeah. still in amazing shape. So they fit and, uh, and had his marbles, uh, you know, had his wits about him. Um, again, family man. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a shame and, uh, it's, I'll, I'll I didn't know him, but I'll miss him, you know, and yeah. based at Canastota. So if you guys ever get a chance to go upstate New York and go and go up to the hall of fame, uh, Hagler would go and he'd be in the, they do a little parade in town. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, it's pretty cool to, if you, if you're a boxing junkie to go up there and see it. Um, I, I think it says something about who he was as a man too, before we, you know, we wrap up on our, on our, um, tribute to Marv is that as a guy in his sixties, uh, with, with worth millions of dollars, spending his twilight years with his wife in Italy, um, comes to the defense of Golovkin when people are calling him a hype job, a great white hype, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Marv came out and said, no, no, no. People don't want to fight this guy like they didn't want to fight me. Right. He's, everyone they put in front of him, he's destroying. He's a de destroyer. They're going to do the same thing. They, th th this is me all over again. They're going to try to wait him out till he gets older, et cetera, et cetera. And he didn't have to do that. And Golovkin paid homage to him when he passed, you know, as, yo, you're the greatest. Thank you to the greatest. And I think that says a lot about him as a man, that he, he don't know Triple G from a can of paint, you know. And this is a guy who moved out of the country. It's not like Marr was one of those guys who was ringside every fight in the 2000s. Right, when he was around, he was around. I think, I believe he had property in New Hampshire. So I, think, I believe I think that's where he passed and where yeah. he was when he so passed. I think he was, you know, in New England still, uh, you know, part time, I believe. Uh, and um, and and, uh, you know, he'll be missed uh, all time. Great middleweight, all time great fighter. And uh, we'd like to uh, we're going to do we're going to do a segment here uh, whenever one of the greats passes. And uh, we're going to we're going to give him the, the 10 bell salute. So we're going to take a moment of silence and uh, celebrate Marvin Hagler and remember him. At this time, our timekeeper at the bell in the tradition of the sport of boxing will toll a memorial count of 10 for the all-time great Marvin 
Jesus. Amen. Thank you.